So, that is what we have done, we have managed to um, project our data which is of two columns which contains height and cigarettes per day into a single axis. Okay. So, you can think of it as some combination of height and cigarettes. Okay. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, you can also think of it as the rotation of your axis. So, I am sure if you had at some point in your uh, college or school, uh, you must have seen this when you have a axis x, y right, and then you rotate it by an angle let us say uh, theta to get a new x prime and y prime. It would then be possible to express x prime and y prime each of them as combinations of x and y. Okay. So, this you must have seen at some point in your uh, um, you know high school algebra or something. So, it is this accomplishes something similar. Now, it is not exactly an additive thing, but it is more a complicated transformation involving both, uh, involving both these features heights and cigarettes per day. Okay. So, finally, that is what we have we create a single uh, feature which is a combination of height and cigarettes and this process of reducing the dimensionality of the data is what we call uh, principal component analysis. Okay. So, uh, mathematically uh, what we can state is that if you have uh, given an n dimensional data set x, well, our idea is to find an n by k uh, matrix u. So, that when we apply uh, u transpose x, when you do this operation u transpose x, we get this new data uh, data y which has reduced dimension in the sense that it has dimension k which is less than n. Okay. So, that is what is uh, given here uh, in this part of following operation that is precisely what we want to do if you want to put it in terms of uh, linear algebra or matrix operations. Okay. Now, let us consider this data set this has two features x 1 and x 2 this is x 1 and x 2. Now, visually we can see that you know that a lot of the information is along one axis right it is along the axis here shown by the black arrow. So, which means that this axis has the maximum variance if you can construct this axis as a maximum variance and we have another axis which is uh, in this case it is orthogonal to this it is a 90 degrees it is orthogonal to this current axis I have drawn and orthogonal to that axis the variation is very small or the variance along the other axis is very small. So, if you project your data along this axis the one of which we first drew the axis that we first drew. Uh, then you could be able to capture most of the information because the variance is highest in this direction and the other direction that we, uh, that we uh, consider is the uh, direction orthogonal to the axis that we have presented and that the uh, variation along the direction is much lower. Okay. So, this is the idea behind doing principal component analysis. Okay. So, uh, what do you need for that? We need two things, we need the direction of this axis. Okay. When I say direction is like we need this vector, this, this vector we need to know. Okay. And we need to know the length of the vector because the length of the vector helps us to determine whether the variance is high in this direction or not. Okay. The larger the length the more the variance along the direction and similarly we need to know the length and direction of the other vector. So, uh, that is what uh, principal component analysis helps us determine. Okay. So, how do we do this accomplish it uh, in we would not go through the actual algorithm for determining this. Okay. Uh, but what we can do is show uh, show, show the process what the process does. Um, so, this uh, principal component analysis is accomplished using what is known as singular value uh, deposition uh, decomposition. Uh, there is a mistake there is usually called singular value decomposition not single value. Um, it is a matrix factorization method uh, normally used for principal co uh, component analysis and it does not require a square data set. Okay. So, it does not matter your matrix need not be a square matrix and uh, it is used uh, in this python package scikit-learn for PCA uh, even MATLAB has a command SVD which helps you do uh, singular value decomposition for mat non square matrices. So, this has um, 5 uh, in this case in this case a m by n matrix m is 5 m rows and 3 columns. So, this is the number of features. right? So, what singular value decomposition does is to factorize this matrix into a product of 3 matrices this is called the uh, left singular vector the left singular vector this is the right singular vector and this is called the singular value matrix so if you uh, do this on a square matrix so, what you will get are uh, the singular value matrix is nothing but the Eigen values the is the diagonal matrix of Eigen values and the left and right singular vectors are nothing but the Eigen vector uh, matrix of Eigen vectors. Okay. 
So, if we have a m by n in this case phi cross 3 uh, matrix we have in this case we have 5 data points we have 3 features okay that is what this means. So, 3 features and we want to reduce it. So, in this we get this u matrix which is the left singular vector which is of size m cross m phi cross phi the singular value matrix which is of uh, which is actually a diagonal matrix. So, it only so in this case the these 2 dimensions are have uh, have 0. So, we have these 3 singular values and the v uh, v transpose has as dimensions n cross n which is 3 cross 3 okay. So, this is the output of the SVD algorithm and what so how do we decide um, you know uh, how do we actually reduce the dimensionality right. Again the idea is uh, we uh, the visually we saw that in the data set there are one direction along which the uh, variance was maximum. However, when the number of dimensions increases it is hard to visualize. So, then we the visualization is done using this particular a matrix which is the singular value matrix. If you see that then uh, these rows are already irrelevant because they do not correspond to any uh, useful singular values. So, the least singular value corresponds to this. So, we can drop the row and column corresponding to this singular value which corresponds to this particular column here and this row here in the B matrix. Okay. So, again we can drop these also because again they do not correspond to any useful direction. Okay. So, that way we get a U matrix which can be which we can project to 2 dimensions. So, we have reduced the number of uh, features from 3 to 2 by throwing out one direction corresponding to the least singular value. Okay. So, this is the truncated SVD that is used for dimensionality reduction. So, we can um, so in this case so what you have to do is if you can throw off these uh, these rows and columns and then actually do the matrix multiplication to get uh, the where uh, the, uh, the correct form of your data matrix. Okay. So, remember the each column corresponds to a feature okay. that is how the data matrix should be arranged. One more uh, information before you do PCA is that they all have to be 0 centered. So, each column has to be subtracted mean subtracted so that um, the mean of this is 0 so, this is one of the requirements for doing a PCA. Okay. So, this is one of the most often used technique for um, dimensionality reduction in the sense that this is the pre-processing step for any machine learning algorithm classification, regression you know you name it and even if you want to do deep learning with images you can actually still do this okay. except that now you have to raster the images into columns or rows depending on how you arrange the data. So, that is for um, you know this is like the you know the workhorse technique and it has proven to uh, shown to improve improve uh, performance in many algorithms okay because what it does is it, it removes the unwanted um, uh, features so by reprojecting your data into a new axis it removes some unwanted features and uh, only keeps those features which are relevant by themselves having a maximum variance okay so some key points to remember I, I would like to reiterate here the idea is that so we have this data set here all these uh, blue uh, um, red blah, red black data points represent the um, two dimensional data x1 and x2 in this case it's 2d the idea is to find uh, a new axis to represent this data but the condition for the new axis is that it's still an orthogonal axis okay is that they are not still an orthogonal axis is that they are they are orthogonal axis so that is enforced by the algorithm the idea is we find this the, the axis corresponding to the most variant uh, most variation in the data and then find another axis corresponding uh, per perpendicular to it and and then look at the variation in that direction so on and so forth so the uh, the principal the principal axis or orthogonal is very important and the important and the main the axis that we want to keep have maximum variance along that direction okay these are the key points that we have to remember and the way this is accomplished is by doing SVD and since there are in, in the case of more than 2 or 3 dimensions the best way to figure out which axis has the most variance is to look at the singular value matrix okay a singular value matrix the you can keep the first k significant terms um, so that you can, you, you can project such a k less than n where n is the um, the original dimensionality of your data okay uh, here we conclude with the principal component analysis um, again there are lots of resources on the web uh, regarding the actual algorithm itself we will post some on the discussion forum as well as on the open announce forum thank you